This is BTV Business Television. Hi, I'm Taylor Tone. And I'm Jessica Katrachuk. Welcome to BTV Business Television. This week on BTV, we highlight six investment opportunities to keep on your radar. Including a golden opportunity in the highly desirable West Red Lake Gold region. When you look at the amount of infrastructure and the amount of capital that's been put in there versus what we actually got the property for, this is where the value opportunity is. We get the goods on a sizzling opportunity in the heart of Asia's booming lithium market. Our management team consists of individuals that have built and sold companies around the world, more specifically or more importantly in Asia as well. We visit a company poised to take advantage of a looming worldwide tin deficit. We're very fortunate from a logistics standpoint. We outline 670 million tons of commercial material. All this and more ahead on BTV Business Television. Red Lake in Northern Ontario is one of the most prolific and highly coveted gold mining jurisdictions in Canada. As home to several majors, it's produced over 30 million ounces of high grade gold over the course of its history. West Red Lake Gold is looking to join that prestigious group with its recent purchase of the past producing Madsen Mine and its accompanying mill, giving the company a second property in the region. The purchase takes West Red Lake a giant step closer to realizing its ambitious goal. The idea is to create within the Red Lake region a hub and spoke model, whereas we have lots of these small properties or high-grade deposits feeding into the centralized Madsen Mill. The Madsen property offers a number of distinct advantages. The normal process of a project, as you know, in mining can take a number, a number of years to develop. With the Madsen property, we have an existing mine. It has a brand new mill in, in place. It has underground development. It has a shaft already there, and it has tailings facilities, water treatment plant, and a permit in place. So when you look at the amount of infrastructure and the amount of capital that's been put in there, versus what we actually got the property for, this is where the value opportunity is. Despite past failures at the property, West Red Lake believes it has the management and technical know-how to ensure a successful result this time around. The previous operator was really more of a junior side of a company. Their focus was more, I believe, on setting the company up for a sale. And, and so they took on a lot of debt. There was a lot of challenges. What we've done is a little bit different. We've built a very, very strong board on our team and a technical team. Tony McCooch is, is one of our board members. He built the company called Kirkton Lake. We have another board member called Duncan Middlemass who built the company called Westo Mining. They've all given it a seal of approval really by coming on the board, which, which speaks well to the quality of the deposit and the opportunity, the deep value opportunity that they see as well. Within the management team, Myself and a number of our management team have lots of experience in building and operating mines. And we've also taken the time to go into the deposit, do a lot more drilling and development to define it a lot better. Given their own capabilities and the success of others in the region, West Red Lake is confident there's a significant opportunity at hand. Evolution operate a mine quite close by, which is the Red Lake mine. And Gold Corp operated that for a number of years prior. And as they went deeper down into the deposit, some over 20 gram average of, of gold. So as we get down into the deposit, I do expect us to get very higher grade material. And obviously that adds to the opportunity. With the potential for significant high grade discoveries on the horizon, the company is feeling good about its prospects. Basically, you're in one of the most highest grade gold regions of Canada. You have infrastructure already in place that we bought from a very deep value perspective. We have a management team and a board that is probably the best in the industry for this stage of a company and really sets the company up for what I believe will be a, a, a growth story and the development of a major, major mining company. The company has already started underground drilling at the Madsen Mine and hopes to begin production within the next 18 to 24 months. Stay tuned for more investment opportunities you don't want to miss. We probably are one of the best 
growth stories out there in oil and gas. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. Rock Resources is a junior oil and gas exploration company with a penchant for acquiring under the radar assets. A few years back, the company anticipated looming supply shortages that would in turn drive up the price of oil. So they went into action and have never looked back. We probably are one of the best growth stories out there in oil and gas. Our primary business plan has been to assemble a big block of assets that when oil prices are strong, we can hit the drill bit and grow the company and the asset. I think there's a lot of people have very good reserve bases with a lot of value and you can ride the oil price up with that. But we add that extra dimension of actual organic growth. So that's very exciting. Rock's technical focus and deep knowledge of the oil fields in Saskatchewan and Alberta gives it a real competitive advantage that has enabled it to identify assets with significant growth potential. The first one we picked up was a, a small 100 barrel a day uh, asset. Uh, we've since built that uh, to over 400 barrels a day. Um, so been able to quadruple that uh, with just a couple wells. The other asset, namely that we bought from Federated Co-op, we've basically taken uh, the core in Southeast Saskatchewan and Northwest Alberta, and we've retained that. We've sold some of the non-core positions in excess of what we paid for the entire asset. Uh, and then our latest acquisition uh, is, is a lot of uh, drillable locations, both in the Mydale and the Frobisher in Saskatchewan. One key way that Rock can continue to add value to these assets is through drilling. We've drilled five wells thus far. Uh, we started in July. Three of those are on production uh, as of today. Uh, we have another five wells planned in, uh, in Q4. We're keenly focused on, on drilling results right now and just organic growth within, uh, within our asset base. Based on the numbers to date, their ambitious targets are well within reach. In the second quarter, we were sitting at about 3,200 BOE a day with, uh, with very little debt. We expect to end the year at 4,500 BOE a day with only 16, 17 million of debt. That's close to 50% growth in uh, six months. Now, Rock is getting ready to up the ante with an unexpected discovery of a vast lithium field right in their own backyard. Operationally, it's exactly in our wheelhouse, in the jurisdiction that we have the highest expertise in. So far, so good. You know, we've drilled the, I think the best two wells uh, ever tested in Canada and we're kind of off to the races with it. And really it's just a matter of moving it forward with uh, whoever that technological partner will be. When Rock does move ahead, their lithium assets could prove to be a game changer. I think that lithium asset actually has the potential to exceed our oil and gas assets in terms of value and ultimate cash flow and returns. But it's an asset that's going to require three to five years to fully develop and our belief is that it's best suited to move that into its own asset, its own entity that, that can raise that capital and focus on the lithium asset. In addition to uncovering its lithium potential, Rock will rely on its highly experienced technical team which has a solid track record of execution and value creation and is fully devoted to growing shareholder value. Lithium has been used in pharmaceutical products, ceramics, and increasingly in batteries that power electric vehicles, creating a big time demand for this metal. In 2017, Ion Energy's management team looked to address this need by searching for new lithium discoveries in Mongolia. Given the country's underexplored potential and its proximity to China, the world's largest consumer of lithium, ION quickly recognized it as a perfect fit. In 2017, I co-founded the company. In 2019, we acquired our first asset, Babayul. And in 2020, during the height of the pandemic, uh, I completed the IPO from my living room as a result of not being able to head into the office. Now, with two highly prospective properties in hand, totaling 110,000 hectares, ION is ready to start making its mark in Mongolia. 
Bavayol is our flagship asset that we went public on in 2020. Our second asset is Urgach Naran, that is in Dorn Govi province. I think Urgach Naran for me is a, a very exciting prospect. It's one that's showing volumes that are you know, roughly five to 20 times the size of the, mo the majority of our peers that are trading at anywhere between 10 to 20 times uh, our, our market cap. When we look at the host rock of our Urgach Naran mine, we found grades of up to 320 ppm across 100 meter intercepts. Albemarle Silver Peak in Nevada had an average grade of 121 ppm in the host rock. It is the only operating mine in North America today. So our grades being almost three times higher than Albemarle Silver Peak, of course, are a very exciting prospect for us. While Mongolia is just starting to open up to mining opportunities, the ION management team already has a well-established track record in the region. Our management team consists of individuals that have built and sold companies around the world, more specifically or more importantly in Asia as well. In terms of our technical team, we have a team that's made up of individuals that have helped build lithium companies to the billion dollar behemoths that they are today. ION's technical team also includes a number of highly skilled Mongolians who bring valuable local expertise to the table. The technical team is a, a, a also a real pleasure to work with because they're uh, primarily Mongolian hydrogeologists and geologists, so it's been a, a real treat to work with these people that are, that are specialists in this area and to, and to learn from them. While ION has been among the first to recognize the value of Mongolia as a mining jurisdiction, others are quickly becoming aware of its vast potential. Mongolia is a relatively new jurisdiction as far as mining is concerned, yet it is very resource rich. The likes of Oyutolgoi, which is a Rio Tinto mine, the third largest copper gold deposit in the world, is located in Mongolia. It's very much perhaps where Africa would have been 30 years ago. Uh, so it is underexplored, there's a lot of potential there, majors are paying attention. Uh, and of course now with the discoveries that we've made, we're seeing more and more entrance in the lithium space in Mongolia as well. Now that ION has planted its flag in Mongolia, the company is ready to start executing its short and longer term strategies. With Bava.io, we'll start to spend a bit more time on that asset next year, perform some geophysical surveys to get a better sense of what's at depth. With Urgach Naran, we've completed 100 line kilometers of geophysics, three diamond core holes, three uh, water wells. We've collected brine samples, we're measuring flow rates, and we're looking to get to an inferred resource. The goal thereafter, of course, would be to bring in a strategic investor with a significant amount of expertise with bringing lithium mines to production, uh, with the ultimate goal, of course, to, to have them come in for a majority stake whereby we would continue to have a free carry on the assets. ION recently acquired two promising lithium assets in the highly desirable Northwest Territories Lithium District that will help enhance the company's profile as a global supplier. Coming up on BTV, more companies in the stock market to keep your eye on. The supply of uranium is key to the nuclear industry's health in the United States as we've grown incredibly reliant upon foreign imports. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. Almost 20% of all electricity in the U.S. is fueled by nuclear energy. And that number is expected to rise, along with the demand for uranium. It's a massive opportunity for Encore Energy, as it looks to become America's next uranium producer. The domestic supply of uranium is key to the nuclear industry's health in the United States as we've grown incredibly reliant upon foreign imports. Roughly half of our 47 million pounds that we burn every year, it's all controlled through the shipping ports in Russia and just emphasizes an already existing need to build a domestic supply base. Encore currently owns three of the 11 licensed and constructed uranium in situ processing plants in the United States, with all three of their assets located in South Texas. An agreement state for nuclear energy and in situ recovery regulations that have significantly shorter permitting timelines and lower operating costs. Being in a business oriented regulatory environment has really helped us to accelerate our development and take advantage of the assets we have and the infrastructure that's there. Our intention is to be one of the nearest term producers in the uranium market as we see this uh, new demand curve and price changes happening. 
Uncor Energy's three existing plants in South Texas have a combined capacity of 3.6 million pounds. We hope to work up towards that uh, sometime in the three to four year time frame. Uh, but we'll be starting initial production and then ramping up at Rosita late this year. And then in the first quarter of 2024, we'll do the same with our much larger project, Alta Mesa. The Encore team has a proven ability using the globally recognized in situ recovery to produce uranium, a process that its team members have both invented and perfected. The in situ process is, a, is basically a, a way to recover uranium without the big open pits and having large mill tailings, facilities, etc. So the footprint is small. It looks just like prairie with a bunch of white pipes sticking out of the ground uh, that represent the wells. It's all done on the surface and all done using water instead of heavy equipment. Encore expects to benefit from considerable tailwinds as it readies itself for 2023 and 2024 production of uranium at its Texas processing facilities. A domestic supply of uranium and strong fundamentals in the uranium industry are all critical for success. You can't get to net zero, you can't produce green energy, you can't replace fossil fuels without nuclear energy. Wind is great, solar is great, but the truth is the sun doesn't shine every day, nor does the wind blow every day, and it certainly doesn't take care of baseload needs. There's a very key fundamental basic need for nuclear energy, and we're here to provide that. Encore Energy currently focuses operations in Texas, but plans to expand to other states to help realize its goal of becoming America's clean energy company. Tin, an essential commodity used in our homes, cars, and even our phones. Aloro Resources' flagship Iska Iska project, a silver tin discovery, has the potential to be one of the largest bulk tonnage operations in the world. It's located in an emerging jurisdiction with unlimited promise, Bolivia. I saw a company based out of Vancouver called New Pacific Metals. Uh, they did a brilliant job in coming into Bolivia as an explorer. Their share cap got up to a billion dollars. Now, wh what are they doing? How did they get into Bolivia? I thought Bolivia was sort of a tough place to work. There was no sort of rush into Bolivia from our standpoint. Having seen what New Pacific did and their sponsorship from groups such as BMO, Royal Bank, different firms, we became very interested and that's when Dr. Bill Pearson uh, arranged a meeting with Dr. Oswaldo Arce from Bolivia, and the rest is history. Dr. Arce, formerly the head of the Geological Society of Bolivia, was hired to lead Aloro's exploration team. Not long after, he brought the opportunity of Isca Isca to Tom Larson's attention. Now, after nearly three years of development work, Aloro has finally published its eagerly awaited mineral resource estimate. We outlined 670 million tons of commercial material. That was lower grade, the market sort of initially expected. However, when you zero in on the upper parts of that open pit, and that's what we deem as really the starter pit, the grades produced a really good profit margin in our conceptual model. The tin found at Iska Iska presents a laurel with a unique opportunity. Tin is a very important metal in the world right now, in the power industry, and Bolivia is one of the important producers of tin. We have a tin domain where we have a more concentrated tin, so it's very important because in the future this will contribute to the economy of the project. Another feature of Iska Iska that could be attractive to a potential buyer is the project's proximity to key infrastructure. We're very fortunate from a logistics standpoint uh, with the project. We've got road access, we've got rail access, we've got water, hydro, all close by. And that's why our cost per meter, at least, drilling is so low. With the mineral resource estimate now in hand, Aloro has a clear roadmap in place that will drive the project's next stage of development. We've got close to seven, eight million dollars cash, so we can infill the upper part, that starter pit, 
and that's what we plan on doing. A lot of the holes that we came out with were 100 meter spacings. You want to really tighten it up, 50 meter spacings to go to indicated, and you can, chances are you'll be able to improve your grade, which will give you more margin, profit margin. There's so many other targets that we have close by to this 670 million ton. So we really do want to go deeper towards that tin porphyry, which I think could be exciting from a blue sky standpoint down the road. Alloral now has its sights set on establishing a preliminary economic assessment that can be used to attract a major world-class partner capable of moving their project into commercial production. Coming up on BTV, more investment opportunities. In one transaction, uh, we were able to double the cash flow. We'll be right back. You're watching BTV. Baytex Energy, a North American oil and gas producer, is thriving in an industry known for its volatility. Thanks to an effective risk management strategy, the company strives to consistently deliver stable quarterly and annual returns. It's a competitive advantage that enables Baytex to stand out from its peers. We've got substantial asset and production exposure to Alberta, to Saskatchewan and to Texas. And this regulatory diversification is important because it's very difficult to predict what will happen with regard to regulatory policies and political movements. But it's also the crude slate itself. So we produce uh, heavy oil north of the border, light sweet oil sold into the Edmonton market, along with light sweet oil sold into the U.S. Gulf Coast market at a premium. So creating price point diversification, regulatory diversification, political exposure that is different from one province to another in the state of Texas gives us this broad-based, resilient and diversified platform that strengthens our company over time. Scale is also an important focus for the company. It can provide access to lower cost capital and ultimately lead to better shareholder returns goals that were at the heart of a recent game-changing acquisition. We recently closed uh, mid-summer the acquisition of Ranger. This is a, a U.S. Gulf Coast operator. This expanded fairly significantly our presence on the U.S. Gulf Coast. Just as importantly, it gave us the full technical and operating capability with the team right in Houston and in the field to offer all the capabilities uh, along the Gulf Coast that we enjoy here in Western Canada. In one transaction, uh, we were able to double the cash flow. We increased the output of the company from about 90,000 BOE a day to 155,000 BOE a day. So as a consequence, we're now returning 50% of our free cash flow generated through the combination of our share repurchase plan, as well as our base dividend, the other 50% allocated to debt reduction. That's just purely on the basis of what we can control. After two consecutive years on the TSX 30, CEO Eric Greger is feeling pretty good about the road ahead. Our massive cash flows on the U.S. Gulf Coast, uh, light sweet premium pricing. We've got uh, a very large heavy oil fairway, more than 700,000 net acres. Um, we have exploration success, three discoveries in three years, including our spectacular Peavine flagship asset. And then the third leg of the stool is really our organic growth engine, which is our Duvernay. More than 20 years of inventory, growing from a low base, but a very, a very strong economic asset that we've unlocked this year. Baytex has a decade's worth of drilling inventory across its portfolio and will continue to rely on organic growth and future acquisitions in its quest to become a top tier North American oil producer.
It's always nice to follow the rise of companies resilient enough to take advantage of market opportunities. Especially when they can provide an immediate payoff for investors by way of dividends. Thanks for joining us today for BTV. I'm Jessica Kaczerczak. And I'm Taylor Tone. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Business Television for the latest interviews on companies in the markets. And until next time, may your portfolio prosper.